Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Savvy Cast. I am here today with my husband, Zane, and he is very kind to be on the podcast today because he has a cold, and he's probably going to be coughing just a little bit, but Zane, thank you for being on today. I want you to share with the listeners a concept that you taught a lesson on in our Young Married Small Group about six months ago. Yeah, it was probably about a year ago, Jenny. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Anyway, and it was a concept that I have never heard anything quite like it, and we just call it the concept of the chair. So I want you to just dive into that for us. Okay. And it actually started, am I correct, with a book. It did, and um, thank you for letting me do this. And I printed out some of my notes because it was about a year ago. And what happened, Jamie, and I didn't tell you about this, I think until about 18 months after I had experimented a little bit with this concept, mm -hmm. right? I mean, right. I didn't even yeah. tell you about it. So it was probably three or so years ago, I was walking through the airport, I don't even remember what airport it was in. Mm -hmm. And I was looking through the business books because my flight was going to leave in about 45 minutes. And right in the middle of the business books, there was this green book written by a guy that went to Harvard. And I said, oh, this is interesting. And the name of it was Listen to the Marriage. I found that very unusual that that was in the business book section. Mm -hmm. And so because of your not interest in, in marriage and the work we do in marriages, mm -hmm. I picked it up and started thumbing through it. Do you saw, remember the author's name? Yeah, John J. or John something. I was looking for the book. Okay. I can't even find the book. Jane. Yeah, we lost the book. Lost the book, but it was actually a novel. And I thumbed through it a little bit. And I was like, I don't know about a novel, but what is this? It was just a picture of a green chair on the front of a, of a book cover. Uh, but I thumbed through it enough that it was interesting, a story, and I couldn't understand why I was in the business section. They uh, were calling my flight, and so I just picked up the book and uh, ended up finding this short novel very interesting and even though the book wasn't about this total concept it's what made me start thinking about the concept of a marriage as a third party and the marriage actually having feelings and having an opinion and then um over time i kind of i kind of played it out in our marriage and that's kind of what what started it for can you tell me why you kept this concept secret so long? Mm -hmm. It seemed like it was growing right. and evolving for a while before you shared it with people. Yeah, with I, I think that's actually a really good word, evolving, because I had read this and then what I decided to do, and, and really this novel was about, and I'm not even recommending the book. Some of it was kind of dark, kind of, kind of weird, but basically, this couple out in California that was very successful, both of them were successful, they had kids and they were going through a terrible marriage situation. Both of them had had affairs, they just didn't care about each other anymore, but they cared enough for some reason they were going to counseling every week. Mm -hmm. And when they went to counseling, the therapist that would say at the end of some of the chapters, she would glance over at the, in the corner to the chair. And you would, I read the whole novel, so I think, hey, what's this chair? And at the end of it, basically was revealed that the therapist was was the marriage was sitting in that third chair they were both sitting on the couch the marriage was sitting in the third chair and she was really through her questioning trying to the get therapist. them the therapist, the therapist yes yeah. thank you trying to get them to consider their marriage not just their own feelings not just their children not just their careers but the marriage and that really was compelling to me and so what i did and start thinking, hmm, I wonder if the marriage was in the room with us in our marriage all the time. If it was with us, what, what would it think, what would it say? So therefore, just to kind of make this real, and again, this wasn't like I was thinking about it every day. I picked up that chair in our parlor mm -hmm. next to the piano, and I would come home and often, you know, I would just sit there and, and ask the chair, how are you and I doing in our marriage? What does it think about certain things? And Jamie, after about 12 or 18 months of this, it was very interesting that the marriage seemed to always get it right. And that's when I think I finally said, Jamie, this is a cool concept. You all read this book, you're like, that's a novel. So this is a cool concept. And then, you know, I shared it that night with our small group. And everybody's seen. What I loved is 
everybody seemed to find application in this. Right. In fact, several people commented that night with an application. So Zane, what you're saying is that you would bring up a scenario to the chair. And right. the chair, you said, always had it right. So you're saying the chair always had an answer. The chair had an answer. And it had an answer in such a way that I could separate clearly my feelings, maybe my selfishness, maybe my um, not wanting to to uh, make you unhappy, and maybe it, it, it just had clarity. And one concept that I wrote down, because I, I forgot some of this, I wrote it down, basically to your question, what, what the point was is when two people, I'm going to read this, are bound in holy matrimony, this, this is what concept I got, a new entity is created. It's one that never existed before. And of course, you and I have a spiritual worldview, a biblical worldview. God acknowledges this new entity as a spiritual sacrament, a sacrament and a represent covenant, covenant mm -hmm. and a representation of Christ's relationship to his church. Mm -hmm. So, just like when you create a new company, a limited liability company, a C corporation, an S corp, so it is when two people get married. And this book really didn't view marriage as a covenant. Mm -hmm. It viewed it as a way, really, to pass wealth on to different generations. Right. And it's, you know, a cool thing to stay together. But a new entity is created like when you and I got married. Now there's all of a sudden, there was Zane and Jamie. Now there's the Jamie and Zane marriage, a new entity. There's the Torrance marriage. And this concept, although I knew, I never really felt like I respected that third entity and really personified it. Well, I, did you even know it? I've never, I, until you brought this concept up, I thought of it as you and me and our covenant. And, and our I collective marriage, yeah. I didn't necessarily view it as another party in the room. Exactly. They consulted, but it made sense when you said that, that night at the small group. It was like, yeah. whoa. Yeah, and, and that's what's cool because we know legally there's something there. But right. what if this marriage um, had an opinion? What if it had a voice? And so really what it did for me when I sat in that chair, it gave this thing that I said is incredibly important in my life. I mean, when they cut off our lights, I know you and I have talked about, you know, I think the first thing God's going to ask of me of, of what did we do with Jesus, but I truly believe the second thing is what about yours and Jamie's marriage? Tell me about that. And um, so anyway, this was really encouraging to me as I started, um, you know, applying it, really. And, and one other thing that I wrote down, it's the whole concept that I know, but I couldn't put legs on it. I couldn't give it a voice as well as asking it, the marriage. Mm -hmm. When you subordinate your individual desires to the desires of your marriage, that's, that's what happens. So it's really not, it, it allows me to not have such a, a selfishness and a self-interest because I'm saying, wait a second, it's not about me. But here's the other thing. As a Christian marriage, sometimes you subordinate your feelings to what I want. Mm -hmm. If I want to invest in a new business or I want to start, you know, um, go on a vacation you don't want to go on. You say, well, I want to be a good wife. Mm -hmm. I'm going to support, subordinate my feelings to Zane. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Sometimes my feelings aren't what's best for the marriage. What if wow. you support? So it gives you voice to say, I love you. I want to serve you, Jamie. But maybe that new house you know, that we won't want to buy, maybe that's not right for the marriage. So it gives me a little more courage not to feel like I'm being ugly to you, mm -hmm. but I'm really asking the question to an authority above me and you. And so the marriage, marriage might have a higher standard for <laughs> our decisions than we have. Exactly. And what wow. I found out is that I was doing some things and making some decisions and even in some areas laying down and not having courage either to disagree with you because it wasn't worth it to me mm -hmm. but the marriage was saying fight fight for me mm -hmm. don't just give up fight for me so anyway that's what it did for me and when we shared it with a small group I felt like people were calling me saying we were having a discussion about you know finances mm -hmm. and and we couldn't really figure out because we both, we both grew up differently how much should we say how much we asked the marriage and the marriage got it right. So I think you also brought up that night, or maybe we had a discussion about it after, 
but you said it's almost like a team or a corporation yes where the coach might say it's not about you the quarterback or you the linebacker it's about the team can you is that it, it's taking you away from selfishness and yes. me-centeredness. Yes, and thank you for reminding me of that. I think most of us that have been on a team or worked for a company or been at a church, it is about the entity. Mm -hmm. We're all here to have a single vision. If it's a corporation, it's to increase shareholder wealth, right, and to have mm -hmm. a healthy culture. If it's a team, it's to win championships, right, and encourage one another. If it's a church, it's to... It's to uh, push the vision of the church, which is Christ's vision, all of us together. That's exactly what it is. But in our marriage, it's almost like we're two individuals trying to make this work. No, we're actually a team. We're actually a church. We're actually a business. And so, therefore, um, submitting or subordinating my feelings to this covenantal thing that we promised before God, it's a really clarifying exercise. And Zane, do you, of course, as Christians, we understand, do you think non-Christians or people of other faiths that this is still a concept that they might embrace to make their marriage better? I do, Jamie. You know, at first I thought, well, maybe it's not, but I actually got it from a, a book that had yep. no spiritual right. moorings. I mean, I don't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I even talked to some of my friends that, you know, have a different worldview than I have, but they want their marriage to be healthy and they're like that makes a lot of sense I'm even using it in my business coaching um, to ask people when they're trying to build a healthy company that has a lot of enterprise value start thinking about your company a lot of owners you know on their businesses are really running their business for their own satisfaction mm -hmm. but what if you start running your business for the overall entity what happens? Your employees, your decisions, will be your decisions are better. Your employees are safer because they know you're not making egocentric decisions for you and your family. You're making decisions for the health of the business. So I think the same thing with our marriages. It makes our kids more comfortable. When mom and dad say, you know what, this marriage mom and dad have, it's, it's more important than even y'all, right? Because it affects them. And I think it gives a lot of comfort when we can subordinate our personal feelings to something higher. And again, it gave me freedom, Jamie, because a lot of times I didn't even confront you with things that <clears throat> because I felt like I was being the good husband, like whatever, even though I thought this particular decision might not be the best for our marriage, mm. I laid down. But then when I say, wait a second, mm. Jamie cares about the marriage. It's her future and my future. I'm going to fight for the marriage. I might not fight for me. And it might look selfish, like I want this because of me. And you could look at me and say, well, that sounds selfish. But if I could come to you, and when I finally told you about this, it was in the context of one of those things. I said, mm -hmm. I, I finally said, Jamie, I'm going to tell you something I'm trying. Tell me what you think. And you said, wow, that puts a different light on this. So. Well, Zane, some practical ways. Just, you know, I'm very practical and like to be able to apply something. One that I thought of immediately, and this is very practical, and it, you know, this is within marriage. One thing that can be an issue if you're just thinking about yourself as a woman might be. Oh boy, I know what this is uh, funny. I didn't know you were well, going to talk about this. No, I, 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 I just believe in boiling everything down to practical, and this yeah. hit me. Okay. Um, there might be times that you know you just don't feel or want to uh, have sex with your husband. When I don't feel like it or I don't want to, whether it's have sex, or for you it might be, I don't feel like mowing the lawn for Jamie. But then if I say, okay, I don't feel right. like it, but let me ask the marriage. Well, clearly the marriage is going to say yes. That is a fantastic example. Um, that, and clearly, as a husband too, you know, I don't want to be bugging you right and say because I say okay I'm asking too much even though you know before I go on this trip I would love to be with my wife but the fact that the marriage comes into it and you would subordinate to the marriage guess how that makes me feel honored mm -hmm. you did that out of respect mm -hmm. for our marriage that that's motivating me 
to to serve you. I just think that it takes us out of our self, out of our mm -hmm. personality type. That's right. Out of our selfishness and makes us look at something higher than we are. Yeah, and, and what about this? I think you, you make a fantastic point. What I know we've used this a couple of times where we're having um, trying to make a decision and maybe we have a different perspective. Right. And lately, I wish we'd had this tool earlier, earlier in our marriage, too. but yeah. we had a situation recently where we could have made an investment in something, you know, mm -hmm. and we both were thinking about it and we had a little bit of a different perspective. Yeah. How would it feel for you instead of me saying, this is, I think it's idiotic. I don't think we should do it. I don't think you're informed. How does that make you feel versus, hey, Jamie, I'm, I'm glad we're really laying this out. What do you think the marriage would say about this? Is that is that a little less threatening to Very you? much so. No. Very much so. And Zane, believe in the lesson that you taught. You brought up something that years ago we had some friendships. And some of those mm. were not necessarily healthy for us. Now, oh, knowing what we know about so asking the marriage, you might have, or those of you listening, might have relationships, work relationships or friendships that your spouse is okay with or you're okay with, but if you ask the marriage, the marriage might say differently. Mm. I remember, um, and again, I mean, I gotta remember we're on a podcast here, but I think in transparency, that is a great example you bring up. The marriage did not like some of those friendships. Even though you and I both enjoyed them, we felt like it was safe for even each one of us, the marriage knew. And actually, the marriage wanted us to move in one of those situations. And we didn't know really that we made the decision for that reason, but I think to, right. to your point, the marriage knows. And I think that's a good question for us to ask ourselves. Um, if you ever start having this little tinge of guilt about mm -hmm. something in your marriage, just ask the marriage what it thinks. You know, I know you and I were talking about my travel not long ago because different seasons in my career right. I've traveled more. When our kids were little, you know, I tried not to travel. We were talking about that. You're like, I'm fine with you traveling because you you like your independence and stuff. And But I felt like I was traveling a little too much. And I remember I used this. I sat in the chair one night and I said, okay, I'm traveling a lot. Marriage, what do you think about my travel? Jamie, it was crystal clear. Mm -hmm. It said, you're traveling too much. And you know what? Wow. It was exactly spot on because it felt a little threatened by that. Um, the other thing I wrote down is um, a question I had. What, what makes your marriage sad? Mm -hmm. So I would encourage if you think right now, any of your listeners or nothing, what right now makes my marriage sad? And it has an answer. Zane, what would you recommend, because many listeners may be women who are very um, on board with this, but maybe their husbands are like the chair. What are you talking about? I'm not going to ask the chair. How do you ask the marriage if you're the only one asking the marriage? Yeah, well, I think a lot of people find themselves in that situation, and mm -hmm. I'm not a therapist on mm -hmm. that, but... Um, I think you have to continue to ask what it's telling you to do. Um, and unfortunately, I can put the chair in front of my, my partner that doesn't really care about the marriage right now, and it's not going to motivate them. I think, mm -hmm. it, I think it will reveal to them that they really don't care about the marriage. And at least, you know, if they say, I don't want to ask the marriage, well, that pretty much reveals where their heart is. Right. One um, person brought up in our small group, the children, mm. that that is, and with young couples, I do believe that is a very difficult um, scenario in right. marriage because you love your children. You love them. Your spouse loves them. But it does the marriage take precedence over your parenting? How would you... Well, and, and this, you know, I think, Jamie, you and I share this view because it's pretty clear in Scripture that kids come and go. We're supposed to raise them up in the Lord and then set them free and they leave and cleave. Your marriage does not come and go. Death, you know, God said, let no man, you know, tear this apart of what God has joined together. So 
I believe our culture is really, really mixed up on this. And, and I was mixed up. I mean, at certain times in our marriage, I enjoyed being with my kids more than I enjoyed being with you, right? Because we had some ups and downs. Yeah. And so... It's easy I to make them idols. It's easy to make idols. them idols. They're easy. They're fun. They yeah. love you. They're my little DNA running around. You know? <laughs> but with your marriage, it's yeah. hard. It's yeah. very hard. Yeah. I think God would say absolutely the marriage takes precedent. Now, what does that mean? We don't feed our kids and we neglect them? No. But there's nothing wrong with a healthy jealousy it's about you as your husband. I mean, not unreasonable, but if I don't like, you know, you being someplace, other men are saying things, that's healthy. I love you. Mm -hmm. You're mine. You know, and you feel loved. But with the kids, the marriage says, I think sometimes to our kids, you are so kid-centric. Mm -hmm. I'm getting no time. Mm -hmm. Would you please invest time? And I think you and I both agree. Right. The, and research shows it very clearly. If, you're, if your kids know the marriage is ahead of everything else, how do they feel? Nothing makes them happier. Secure. So secure. And right. what happens to kids when their marriage of their parents starts getting rocky? Insecurity. Insecurity. If they're right. teenagers, drugs, you know, sex, I anything. But the kids that know that their parents put a priority on the marriage, they sleep very well at night. Absolutely. And <clears throat> Zane, you and I have talked about this before. Marriage is, at least we believe this, the hardest thing you will ever do it's sanctification now mm -hmm. it's wonderful and it's a blessing but it is sanctification it's not easy. and your children that not so much they don't sanctify you I mean they no. might frustrate you but the reason the marriage would have to take precedence is because it does have a different level it's a lasting or it should be lasting it's a covenant but to me, the reason the chair is such a, a fabulous concept is because if we don't have that higher bar for our marriage, mm. we will default to what's easy, which is yeah. the kids. Yeah. That's the very reason Asking the chair the marriage right. is not natural. That's right. And I think in the world, you know, some people are like, wait a second. They don't view marriage as the priority. But when you say, wait, this marriage is everything, I will do whatever it takes to stay married because of my high esteem of marriage. Because at those times, you really don't have a high esteem of your spouse. You're like, I married the wrong person. Right. I got a bad hand here. I got to get out. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you had a huge esteem of the marriage? Whoever I'm married to, I'm going to fight. It doesn't have right. anything to do That's with right. you. What if you start doing things I don't like? What if you, you know, lose some of your values you had when we got married? It doesn't merit matter. I have more loyalty to our marriage than I even do to you. But guess what? If I have that loyalty to the marriage, who wins? You win. I'll be faithful. I'll serve you. I'll love you. I'll listen to you. And so, but this is very convicting. Listen, one of the reasons I didn't mm. tell you this for a while, I think if I was truly thinking through this, I was testing this and there were some things so clear that I don't think I wanted you to ask the marriage about certain things with me because it would have required some changes. One of those was travel because I felt like I could make more money traveling and stuff. And I, I knew I was trying to say, come on, marriage, let me cheat you for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, I also think there were things um, that the marriage wanted me to give up, some hopes and expectations that I would have said, these are hopes of the marriage. No, they weren't. They were my hopes. They were my dreams, mm -hmm. not yours. And so, I mean, this this was a wounding type of uh, of exercise for me. So it's not like, you know, it, it didn't really point out some truths that I don't know if I was ready to really to submit to. The best piece of advice I can give you is always be involved in some sort of counseling, whether it's a Sunday school class at church, a marriage small group, or an actual therapist. So you and I, at this point in our life, we lead small groups, we have mentors, but we also go to a therapist, a counselor that Good we, or we bad. love. Once we love a month, therapy. we're going to sit in that right. counseling room. And what I have found is some of the same things come up over and over and even those of you listening if you had to sit down and write down the top three issues in your marriage but 
What about just saying, okay, we're going to write down these three issues that come up time and again, and instead of asking someone to moderate, let's just ask the marriage. And I think that's what a third party helps you do. Now that you know we've gone to counseling and stuff, I think a third party really helps you to see yourself, your own way, and back up and say, y'all are the ones that are paying me to come here. You must value the marriage. Why are you here? You know. And so I think that's what a good counselor and therapist does. They help you to dispassionately step back and say, here's what I want, here's what I believe in, just help me not self-destruct you know, with my own selfishness. Right. And also on that note, even a therapist or a friend mm -hmm. or a, a wise Indeed counselor, it's... their standard may not be as high as, as the their marriage. marriage. We ask the marriage. The marriage has very clear. Oh, absolutely. You, you know, Jamie, you bring up a fantastic point. I got this example I didn't even think about. I was having a discussion with a guy the other day. And it got to um, eating lunch with members of the opposite sex, mm -hmm. okay? So even if it's in business, you're trying to sell them something. But, you know, going out to a nice restaurant in the middle of the day when they're looking their best, you're looking your yeah. best, you're, you know, behind a career, you look really better than you are. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, my wife, I don't get it, Zane. You're saying this could be dangerous. I don't get it. You know, it's not a threat to us. And my wife doesn't even care. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think you're a little bit of a legalist. He knew my background. said, so I think you're a little bit judgmental, you know, and you're and you're reading something into something that's silly. And I said, I get it, how we come from different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, and I won't say his name. Think about all these lunches that you're having. And there was one particular lunch he was having. I questioned him because the woman, I'll just be straight up, because you and I are straight up. Yeah. She was gorgeous, mm -hmm. okay? And, 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 you know, he's not an idiot. He right. knew she was gorgeous. And I just used this just as an example. I said, what do you think your marriage thinks about you eating lunch with her? And, and he hesitated because he knew the answer. His wife was okay with it. Wow. He was okay with mm. it. He was trying to tell yeah. me I was legalistic, but guess what his marriage did? Yeah. It judged him. And guess what it should have done? Judged him. So anyway, that's the reason wow. I love this concept. Yeah. And, and he didn't feel like I was throwing a scripture at him or my own worldview. He knew good and well the marriage did not like that. Wow, so, that's powerful. And Jamie, yeah. you said this earlier because I know we're going late. I do encourage you to get a chair somewhere in your house. Mm, yeah. Something physical. You know, some of us run away from stuff physical because of our religious heritage or whatever, but the physicality mm -hmm. of that chair, right. that picture even reminds me of what, that our marriage is, is important. That physicality is important. Um, we've already talked about this a little bit, but, you know, slow down. Listen to your marriage. That's the point. Ask the marriage. You have to listen to it, okay? Mm -hmm. So slow down. Rest, take inventory of marriage. Where were you today and my actions, my, my investments? What habits are hurting your marriage now? And I said it a minute ago, the thing that blessed me more than anything, the marriage got it. Where is my marriage sad? Yeah. It wasn't judging me, it was sad. Mm -hmm. And then the good thing, where is the marriage saying that it likes more deposits? The marriage is like, wow, you and Jamie went on a walk the other night with Cam. Mm -hmm. I liked that. Mm -hmm. Do more of that. So the marriage also has a person, it's not just mean and old selfish sitting over there in the corner. It likes certain things. So ask your marriage, what do you really like? When Jamie and I, I think our marriage likes you and me going on walks. Mm -hmm. I think it likes us sitting on our deck. Um, and sometimes for us, we in our older age, and I hate to say that, but we're older, I think our marriage likes us talking in the mornings. Yes. And I think I might have to change my mm -hmm. schedule because the mornings are our best times. We have our best conversations with a cup of coffee mm -hmm. after we've done first fruits, yeah. just talking. And I might have to change my business schedule for that because the marriage says, I kind of like that. At night, I think you and I are, are yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm kind of yeah. tired. I kind of used all my words and yeah. you're not really studying me that much sometimes. Then the other thing I would say, the last thing is what is the major competitor for your marriage? My attention let me tell you what my marriage told me. And I was scared. I've never told you this, Jamie. You know what the marriage told me? Before I even had a chance to tell it. Oh my goodness, that's what Jamie's always said. That I interrupt. It said, 
I'll tell you what competes. You always interrupt. You don't let just sit there and listen to Jamie. You're trying to think about what you're going to say. The marriage told me what you've been telling me for 31 years. Some, you get tired of telling me, so you stop, but it's still there. Ask the marriage what is competing with you. My marriage told me my many words. Wow. And, you know, as you were talking, I was asking myself, because, boy, we had a powerful sermon this morning. We did. Take your inventory. And um, mm -hmm. Pastor Chris talked about taking inventory. Mm -hmm. And I was so convicted because I am busy, busy, busy running around. I, it's hard for me to take inventory. You are very good at that. But I thought, okay, I've got to start taking inventory. So if I were to ask myself that, mine is my busyness. Because mm -hmm. when you do want to talk, so often I'm like, honey, I've got to do this. I'm cooking or I've got to run here, run there. So I think that the concept of the chair mm -hmm. is, is about taking inventory and about putting a high bar, a bar that's higher than each of you individually in the marriage. Totally agree. And I, I just, I love that we have this physicality of this mm -hmm. picture. I just appreciate that you were able to put this into a, such a valuable lesson. And um, I just hope that if any of you out there have questions or you want to delve into this further, just message me. And I mean, we would love to hear feedback on yes. this. Yes. And, and Jamie, I'm grateful. I didn't want to do this. I'm sick. I know. You didn't I try to, but I, 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 asked I just them, thought it was very important. And it's fun being on my watch. It's a good bit. Um, I asked the marriage and it told me I needed to do this. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> Thank and you. let me say one other thing that you just yeah. brought up. And I know we're late. And I'll stop. No, you're fine. I was just thinking just then, there's also other people in our lives that our marriage really likes and our marriage is grateful for. And I would encourage us all to ask the marriage, who are the friends of the marriage? What? Absolutely. And, Amen. and, and invest in that. And I can yeah. think of our, your, some of your lady friends that are rocks, mm -hmm. that are spiritual men. Let me tell you, I could name those women right now. I need to call them and thank them. I need to send them to Highlands Bar and Grill. Um, yeah. I love you women yeah. for you being a friend of my marriage. Because yeah. there are times when without your counsel, yeah. we would have been in deep trouble. I love many authors who have been a deep, mm -hmm. deep friend of my marriage. And my marriage loves you. I love Dr. Mm -hmm. Joe Bean that Jamie mentioned. He has been a dear friend of my marriage. Mm. Even though it hurt me some things he said, my marriage is deeply grateful. I love my parents who pray for my marriage, our marriage, yeah. every single day. I love my daughters who are a deep friend of Jamie and my marriage and mm. pray for us and give us time together. Encourage us. Mm. Tell me, Dad, have you taken Mom out lately? So, take an inventory of who the friends are of your marriage. Be around them, just like the people that aren't your friends. And there's several people out there that aren't the friends of your marriage. We, we know some. Stay away from them at all costs. So, anyway. Well, that, I cannot follow on that. I have tears in my, that is, that is powerful and I echo that. And I would say the same thing to your friends who have stood up for me and all of the people who've walked alongside us. And I just encourage any of you who are married, choose friends who are for you and who are for your marriage. Yes. And anyway, Zane, thank you. Thank you so much. And we just appreciate all of you who listen. And I would just um, be so grateful if you would let us know how this concept may have affected you or touched you in some way. But. Anyway, y'all have a wonderful day, and Zane, thank you again. Thank you. That was fun.